Greetings Gamer Geeks and welcome to Gamer Q&A Part 3, where I answer the last 10 questions of getting to know me. Now, I've also got a couple of bonus questions that my wife actually suggested that I ask, as well as some extra goodies, some extra content at the end of the video that I'm going to display. So. Let's get started, shall we? Alrighty. Here we go. Question 21 asks, have you ever had to stop playing a game because it's too scary? And the answer to that would absolutely be no. I've never had to stop playing a game because it's too scary. Now I've jumped a lot, trust me. I really have jumped a lot in a lot of my games, but um, Resident Evil games especially, but I've, nothing's ever been so scared that I'd actually stop playing the game. That's never happened to me at all. Um, I do know a few people in my past who have done that with some Resident Evil games, even the Dead Space games, 1, 2, and 3. But no, I've never done it myself. So to answer question number 21, have you ever stopped playing a game because it was too scary? Absolutely not. I haven't done that at all. Question 22. Has a game's storyline ever made you cry? And I can actually say yes to this. Um, it's only been one game, believe it or not, and it was actually Final Fantasy X. And I think it's because of the fact that when I was playing that game, I did get it way late, like maybe in my early 20s maybe mid-twenties, and uh, I just thought it was really sad when I understood the premise of a guy. Now, if you haven't played the game, spoilers right here. So, if you don't want to hear this, skip to this time slot right here. Okay, now that that's out of the way. Um, yeah, the fact that I actually thought that this guy not only was taken a thousand years into the future so everybody that he knew everything that he knew the world that he knew was gone and for some reason that just devastated me because i can only imagine being thrown into a time that I wasn't supposed to exist and only imagining what things have changed, you know, what things have stayed the same. But what really got me was the fact that the main character was no longer alive either. He was a dead person. You were literally just playing as like a spirit in a way and just kind of going through the motions of this adventure. And the fact that he actually made new friends and made connections with people. And the difference that it made. Now, I will have to admit, if I was living in Japan, I guess it would be a different type of emotion. Because at the end of the game, after you beat Final Fantasy X, um, Yuna literally looks at Titus and says... I love you. In the Japanese version, she says, thank you. And I guess, like I said, it would be a totally different emotion because she is thanking him for going on this journey with her, you know, going through this pilgrimage, so to speak. And in this one, in the American version, they have that little scene in the water where it's very emotional and they make out, they kiss. Um, that was such a connection. And knowing that he had to leave all these people that he just met, you know, that he had to say, hey, we are going to go on this journey together, you know, let's make it a fun one, let's make it memories out of this thing. And then at the end, he just ends up putting his arm around her because at this point he's, he's a spirit, and then he just walks right through her 
and then it just jumps off the edge of the ship. It was just such a touching moment and with her uh, literally saying that she wishes that he would come back knowing that he's not going to when she's at the end of the pier and then saying that spirit is now free from this torment it also struck a chord with me because it's like can you imagine going through your life you know and not knowing when this terror is going to hit but the year that you're born is the year that this terror comes you know, and all you're doing is able to deal with it. You know, you gotta live your life the way you can, but you just deal with this emotional struggle that you know you have to go through every day and you thank God or Yevin in that game, so to speak. Well, who they thought was good. And, uh, you know, it's just so heartbreaking. And it was sad to know that it took his sacrifice to actually bring peace to this new world, this Spira that he didn't really know of, you know? And oh my gosh, yeah, I, te I teared up. Even cried through the entire credits. You know, I didn't like hardcore emotional cry, but oh yeah, there were tears down my face. It was a very sad game, so. Uh, has a game storyline ever made you cry? Yes, and that is Final Fantasy X for PS2. Question 23 asks, what's your favorite fighting class? Warrior, mage, or rogue, and why? And I'm not really a big fan of playing MMOs. I do like them. I really do, and I really would like to enjoy playing with more people if I could, you know, if I had the time to do so. But whenever I do, even if it's a game like an RPG where it's an action RPG, you had to choose something like that, um, I'd have to say mage. Uh, the reason being is because I'm not really into the whole like being a tank or and DPS is kind of fun. I like that, but I've always liked the fact of staying back in the behind the scenes and you know just focusing on the healing and protecting. And I guess that's more of like a mentality of mine. I've always wanted to be the one to you know protect others and be there for people and help those who are willing to accept the help. And that's the key word, accept the help. Because we all know there's people you try to help out there and they just don't want to accept anything from you. Um, but I was like focusing more on that aspect of healing others, you know, or um, you know, protecting those. Or I also like being snipers, you know, just the guy that was way in the back, the guy that nobody expects to, you know, you know, shoot somebody or oh my gosh my life is down and holy cow how am I at full health all of a sudden oh it's the mage in the background how cool thank you bro that's amazing and that's just what I like to do I like to be the like kind of like behind the scenes guy who throws out that extra health or you know snipes that dude from 30 feet away that would be my Number one class that I would always choose every time. And those would be the reasons why. So, what's your favorite class? That would be Mage, because or Sniper, because I like to be in the background and help out those in the foreground, you know, defeat the enemies and things like that, you know. Question 24. What's your favorite game genre? And that would probably have to be JRPGs, or RPGs in general. Um, I've always been into the whole role-playing aspect, you know? I always liked the fact that I could throw my name as the main character, and then I would be the one in the adventure, you know? And it was a bit of a connection. Like, I really felt connected with the games that I played because of that aspect. And I love the whole, like, team battles, you know, and doing, like double text with other characters and triple text with others uh, that's always been so fun and story story is a big thing with me I really enjoy plot twists and those sudden deaths that no one ever expects you know and how you started as someone as crazy as boy like in Secret of Mana literally that's your name boy tell your name uh, you know, it's what you are a boy, and you end up falling down some creek, and 
and you find a sword and boom, there you go. You're all of a sudden, now you gotta take care of everything because you picked up a sword that some voice said, hey, pick me up. And it's like, oh, guess what? You screwed the world by releasing all the powers and all the enemies and everything else like that. Good job, brother. Um, I like things like that. You know, it's, you know, it's the underdog, the one, the unlucky one, right? The guy who doesn't expect to be the one ends up being the one. Although what would be even cooler is if they made him look really shaggy and like, you know, like completely, complete underdog, like ripped clothes and just some random dude in the trash can. That'd be hilarious, you know, because I would really love that. But, although I think some games have done that, but yeah, uh, JRPGs, mainly because of the action, the gameplay, uh, the story. Uh, so that would be uh, my favorite. Favorite genre, JRPGs. Uh, question number 25. Do you prefer multiplayer games or to go solo? And I'll be honest with you, it's a little bit of a mixed bag with me when it comes to this question. Um, I like solo because uh, I grew up, you know, in the Generation X, millennial, beginning of the millennial whole deals or whatever, you know. And a lot of the games were one player games. So there weren't very many two player games that came out that I was really interested in. You know, other than maybe some fighting games. A couple of action games, I know there was like one uh, Knights of the Round game or SNES or something like that. And I really enjoyed that game. Those games were pretty fun. I like playing as Lance a lot in that one. I uh, never beat it though. But, um, you know, when it comes to multiplayer games, um, I do like playing them if they're one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Those are fun. Uh, but mainly solo games. I like playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one games. I like being the one in control, uh, the one doing everything, feeling like I'm the one who accomplished all this. So, uh, do you prefer multiplayer games or to go to solo? I enjoy multiplayer games, but I prefer solo games. Question number 26. Do you prefer co-op or player versus player? Which I believe I just answered in the other one. Um, I prefer player versus player. I like that. Don't get me wrong, co-op is fun, but I always feel like I'm the dead weight whenever I play any kind of co-op game. You know, I'm the one that is holding everyone else back because I don't quite know exactly what uh, someone wants to be done. Even when I'm asking whether it's couch co-op or online, I just feel like I'm really messing everything up. So I prefer player versus player because I know that it's me, I know what I want to do, I know what my goal is to kill the other person, you know, or whatever, however the gameplay goes, um, and that would be my choice. So, do you prefer co-op or player versus player? Player versus player. Uh, question number 27. What is the first console you ever owned? Now, the first console I ever remember having would be an Atari, because my mom had an Atari. But the first console I ever I actually bought myself and owned was probably the PlayStation 1. I had a Sega Genesis when I was growing up, but again, that was a gift from my mom. It was a Christmas gift. Uh, but the PlayStation 1 was the first one I actually owned. I was working at Long John Silver's at the time, so I had my first job going in high school, and it really just come out back then. Uh, well, not really. It was 1997 when I had my first job, I believe. So the PlayStation was the first one I ever played, and Funny story, my best friend in high school actually had Final Fantasy VII, but he didn't have a PlayStation. So he used to always come over to my house and play Final Fantasy VII. In fact, I, that's when I first played it, was with him because he had it. And he would spend the night, we were literally like maybe one building from each other in the same complex. So it was not that, it was like, you're here, I'm there. That's pretty much where we were all the time. But I just think that was funny because the first game that I ever bought was Wild Arms, and boy did I enjoy that game. That got me into the whole Wild Arms uh, franchise. I beat number one, played number two, never beat it. Never played number three, and I really don't know why. Um, played number four, I was about to beat it, but unfortunately I got kicked out of my house by my mom at that time, so I didn't really beat it. And then same thing with Wild Arms 5. I was literally, was I, I was about to beat that one too, and I was rooming with someone and we didn't get along and it's a real shame because I want to go back to play those games you know and 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a PS2. I really need to get one. But um, I, the fact that I've played every single one of them is great. I'm going off topic, I'm sorry. But uh, the console was... Um, uh, I'm sorry, just because I realized why I'm But the console was... Um, it was PlayStation 1, and I got my console in 1997. Uh, question number 28. What or who got you into video games? And believe it or not, it was actually my mother. My mom is the one that bought the Atari, and I said in an earlier video that it was E.T., it was Pitfall, it was some space game, and I can't remember that one either. Because uh, again, like I said, I was only maybe three years old, and I'm 38 now, so... But it was my mom, because my mom was the one who showed me how to play, and the joystick, and I really thought it was fun, and it was cool because I was young, and my brother was going to school at the time, he was eight, so he might have been in second grade, I believe. Uh, we're five years apart, my brother and I. And so my mom, you know, was telling me to, oh, keep trying and oh, jump. And it was kind of funny because you know how, like, you have a lot of games that have second delays when you press the button? My mom had to be, like, second delays when she told me when to jump, obviously, you know, because I'm a kid, you know, and I do it things right after. So when I was getting to, like, a, uh, a pitfall, she would tell me to jump, and I would jump at the right time because she would tell me beforehand to jump and then I'd grab onto the uh, branch and you know the vine and swing and she'd say jump and then I would get to the end of the pit and I'd hit the, uh, the orange button to jump off and yeah so uh, what or who got you into video games? Um, it was my mom and it was so much fun. Uh, I really love the fact that she got me into games and she's turned me, and I'm the gamer I am today because of my mom. I guess in a way you can say she kind of shaped me into it. It was really cool. Uh, question number 29. What is the longest amount of time you have ever played a game nonstop? And for me, I'd have to say 10 hours, 12 hours maybe, sometimes, could be longer. Yeah, I've, done, I've sat down uh, for long periods of time. Now, my best friend Lonnie back in the day, he would do it like 24 hours. Like, he could stay up 24 hours and just play his games on his day off. It's insane. So. He's got me beat there. But me, I'd say about, yeah, about 10 to 12 hours, maybe 13, would be the longest I'd be pushing. And that's for any RPG I've really played. If I'm really into the game, I will keep on playing and keep on playing and keep on playing. Um, funny thing is, though, about me, I don't really eat snacks when I'm playing games for two reasons. Number one, I always wanted to pay attention to what was going on. And I felt like the, me crunching and eating something always like interrupted the music or whatever, and I did, couldn't hear things. or I happen to be chomping on a Cheeto and hear a, well now I missed it because I'm chomping on a Cheeto when that would have really affected the game in my eyes. And the music, I want to always hear the music. The second thing is, I didn't want to get like crumbs all over the controllers. And especially since my mom was hardcore when I was younger about taking care of my game systems. Um, so I stayed in that mind aspect of taking care of them. So, uh, that's another reason why I never really did that. Uh, but again, I apologize, I keep getting off topic of these questions. But, um, uh, what's the longest amount of time I've ever spent on a video game? Like I said, about uh, maybe 10 to 12 hours, 13 would be pushing it. Uh, again, mostly RPGs, Final Fantasy, uh, Thousand Arms spent a while on. Of course, you know, Persona, over 100 hours, so you know I spent like you know, 10 to 12 hours a day, you know, on that one alone, so, um, there you go, there's the answer to that question. And now we're at number 30. Uh, what is your favorite song from a video game? And this is going to sound really funny, maybe kind of cheesy almost in a way, but my favorite music of all time in a video game has got to be the, um, Music when you rest for Chrono Trigger. Hey! Uh, I love that song. And it's just a simple tune, you know? It really is. It is just a very simple tune. And it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Uh, 
I've had that for ringtones for years to come. When you found out I can download game ringtones and other kind of ringtones, once I found out I could find that one, that was, well, not really my ringtone, but my notification tone for my text messages. Because I just love that little tune. It really is something that simple. Um, most recently, it would probably have to be uh, Face My Fears from Kingdom Hearts 3, and I know a lot of people didn't like that game, and even I had some mixed reviews on it. Um, uh, even The Sun is Happy from Breath of Fire 3 is another good one. Uh, but yeah, that simple little tune is all it is. That's, that's, that's what I enjoy. Um, that is my favorite game music, and it's only maybe like two, three seconds long. It's literally that short, but it is my favorite sound ever. Um, that's, and I'm sorry, that, that music to me is just the coolest music, you know, playing. Well, you know what? Now that I think about this, it's probably going to be Robo's theme from Chrono Trigger. Robo's music is probably my favorite music of all time. And one reason why is because whenever I cook, and I don't really cook very often, I'm, I guess I'm an okay cook in my eyes at least, but um, I love playing that music whenever I'm cooking anything. Because to me, it's just like, all oh, right, that's time to, time to throw some stuff on the pots and let's get cooking and let's play my favorite theme song. Because that to me just sounds like pots and pans, just you know, like going off and you know, it's, it's just so cool. So now that I think about it, yeah, it'd be Robo's theme because I love just listening to it on my downtime, but I love listening to it when I cook, actually. So, favorite music, favorite song. Um, would have to be uh, Robo's theme. Okay, um, now uh, here is, uh, here are the bonus questions. Um, here are the bonus questions. First question again, I thought it was really cool that my wife thought suggested this, so here we go, I'm gonna try it. So, question number 31 uh, is, if video games didn't exist anymore, what would you be doing? And to answer that question, honestly, I would probably be more into my art. I used to really love drawing and uh, just creating things on paper, and it was so much fun. I love sketching. I went, I took a couple of drawing classes in high school. Um, when I went to college for video games, there was an art class and I really, really loved doing that one. So, uh, what would you be doing if games didn't exist? That would be uh, sketching around and doing art, my friend. And the final bonus question. So, question number 32. Have you ever wanted to live in a world from a video game? If so, which one and why? Uh, yes, I have. I know this is gonna sound kind of funny, but um, uh, Final Fantasy 13 2. Uh, there's a world called Academia with uh, hope when you're a little bit older, and it's a futuristic world. And I would love to live in a futuristic world, especially being the uh, techie that I am. Um, uh, I just love how they have like the escalators, just like going, and these are quick escalators. They're not like, you know, um, airport escalators, you know, on the floor that are slow. I mean, these things are, you zoom, you literally stand on these things and you are like, <laughs> like you get to the other side super quick. Uh, you got the flying cars, you got the, holograms and everything else it is just so cool and the reason why i would love to live in that world is because there is a small part of me or maybe a huge part of me that feels that i was born in the wrong time that i should have been born sometime way into the future like way into the future you know not like wally status you know where all these well maybe wally status you know but not in that type of scenario um, but just like you know on earth 500 years in the future technology is the way people live it's the norm and i just always wanted to live in a world like that you know a futuristic technological world so to answer bonus question number 32 have you ever wanted to live in a world from a game if so which one and why yes i have that would be 
Academia from Final Fantasy 13 2 because I feel like I should have been born sometime in the future. All right, guys, now that completes uh, Q&A part three. Uh, I hope that by watching these videos, you did get to know me a little bit better or a lot better. Uh, maybe we have a lot of things in common. That would be very, very awesome. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making this video. And I want to give you a heads up on what I'm going to be doing next which is, that's right, it's going to be a four-part video on the PlayStation Classic. And also, before I go, I want to show you the decorative leaves that my lovely wife put up, you know, because fall is obviously coming and Thanksgiving and all that fun stuff. So she wanted to throw a little holiday spirit in there. So again, thank you, babe. I love you very very much for doing that because the support that you give me for this is so amazing I, I appreciate it so much and again have yourselves a great day thank you for watching and please enjoy the extra content I have at the end of the video If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to see my latest videos.